Hello, traders. I hope you are having a great time so far. How are you guys? Everyone okay? Good afternoon and good evening to those who are in a different time zone. Let's wait for a couple of minutes. Jen, Jens will join us soon. So from me, I would just like to mention that in case you haven't registered yet for the Market Talks next series, the fourth episode, uh, I will be interviewing John Bollinger this time. So please make sure you book your seat. I sent you the link through the chat. Is anyone trading today the gold or the US dollar somehow? With an on farm payrolls, maybe no one that's okay. <laughs> okay, so I'll put my mic on mute for a while until Jens. Oh, here is Jens. All right, Jens. Hello, welcome. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear, Beautiful. as usual. Ah, you, <laughs> have to you, love, you have to love these these laptops and that stuff. That's awesome. This uh, the 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 techniques behind this. To oh, get, oh, okay. To get yeah. the webinars running. This is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes it becomes a bit weird, huh? Ah. Uh, please update and uh, yes, let's 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 update. Update is is nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fair yeah, I'm, to answer your question, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fine, fine, very good, very good. I just so you scalped here. the non-farm payrolls. Ah, uh, to be honest, no, I didn't do anything. Okay, I that's don't, surprising. It's, it's, I it's, don't. It's, yeah, I don't usually scalp it. Okay, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, okay, you you're older now. <laughs> yeah, not anymore. I mean, it's uh, the it doesn't trader. it doesn't match my 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 trading style. To be honest, it doesn't. The only thing much my trading style is uh, to scalp the ducks in the morning for a reason. I mean, I love it. It's something I do day in day out. I think I think the DAX is also very great to scalp due yeah. to um, um, the sometimes very dynamic moves. So um, oh yeah, oh yeah, it, it's really nice, right? So if I if someone asks me um, as a beginner, I probably recommend when trading equity indices. I probably say, well, probably go for the S and P five hundred or so. It's yeah, it's what it's 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 deeper. True. It's um, it's it's like there's more. Let's call it trend stability. Once you trend, you trend. In yes, the case of the yes. DAX, it's like you spike up and down and down. Oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't do that on a, on any other. I mean, I just go in for 10, 15 points and that's it. I call it for a day. I mean, today I got a losing trade yesterday. I think, no, yesterday it was a good winner. On Wednesday, it was a losing trade. So it, it's just, it is what it is. But I do the same thing and overall it's uh, positive results. And I mean, and uh, and I assume for those they join the live trading webinars on the in the morning they also experience the same thing because I do it live I don't just I don't do it behind <laughs> behind so, the screen. So you 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 play you 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 are the big one in the in the decks in the morning. <laughs> yeah, maybe the brokers they don't like me in the morning. <laughs> 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 Theo, the the Dax Piranha. <laughs> okay, Ryan Ryan Azar said that I asked, are you trading anything? This afternoon, and he said on on the good side of gold, and that's awesome. Oh, gold! By the way, very interesting. Um, um, I think in in, in uh, regards to to the non-farm payrolls, I think we have a very interesting level there with one nine eight five or so nine yes. eight something around this. So if we can, we didn't make it above that, but but we are also not selling selling off, even though we have quite solid numbers. I think re regarding non-farm payrolls. By the way, shall I share my screen? So uh, then then we absolutely. can jump right into the action and uh, absolutely. Give me one second. Okay, the stage is yours. <laughs> Beautiful. Have a nice weekend, Theo. You and talk too. to you next week. I really look Absolutely. forward to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.
Okay, so guys, um, hello. Um, nice to be here once again. And uh, today is once again the first Friday in the morning, uh, in the in the morning, in the month. Um, so we are talking non-farm payrolls. We are trading non-farm payrolls, and uh, we want to have a look at um, what to make out of the uh, fresh release of the data set um, several minutes ago, something like 30, 35 minutes ago. Solid numbers, um, so better than expected. And the interesting thing is, we could have seen that coming, to put it honest, uh, to, to, to put it um, um, simply, due to uh, very solid numbers around the ADP data um, that was earlier, earlier this week. So yeah, yesterday on uh, Thursday. And um, also, we had quite solid numbers when it came to the ISM manufacturing um, employment component. You probably remember, we are usually um, watching the... Um, ISM here, not the the release itself, but it's more like um, looking at the subcomponents, um, like employment, like pay prices. I am mainly looked at the pay prices, which came in significantly below expectations. By the way, probably showing shining a light towards inflation data, which is released one day before the Fed, um, which will um, um, meet on the. 14th, I'm sorry. I think, yeah, 14th, 14th of June um, in regards to a rate decision. And, um, but also the employment. So pay prices came in lower than expected while employment came in above expectation. And we had also already on Wednesday, jolts, which were um, better than expected or better than expected, probably wrong way to put it. So we're talking about job a job offer. So if a company looks um, into a better future or to an economic strong future, um, something we right now don't really expect then uh, you expect companies to offer jobs and uh, there are more jobs there are um 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 well offered the the higher the number of jobs should come in over the last months we we saw a significant drop here which is like um exactly the opposite of what i just said that companies probably expect um the economy to shrink or at least there is a kind signs of, of a recession at the horizon and um, so long thing short we, we shouldn't be that um, um surprised that the non-farm payrolls came in better than expected um and unemployment rate came in above expectation but and this is the thing the market is not really selling off due to that due to the spikes um, in in yields in fact we don't get to see these spikes anymore um we priced significantly out 25 basis point rate hikes um expectations for the june event um and yesterday we also saw a very strong close in the s p 500 um th that being said i think the um signs are more to the long side into the weekly close but what I think is more interesting in terms of the non-farm payrolls and yields especially is probably gold. And this is exactly what we want to focus on. And you can already see that. And that's where we head now to the risk disclaimer. Um, we are probably seeing me formulating kind of a trading setup, a trade ideas. Please make sure that you understand that everything I to tell you today and I present to you are my thoughts and um especially that if I formulate a trade hypothesis um, or a trading setup in general, that we make some kind of trade or something, that um, this is uh, um, um, involving risks thing since we are we are talking or we are we are we are um, dealing here with leveraged products they are not suitable for all investors and please make sure that you understand the risks involved when trading these leveraged products before you start don't know the demo see how they work if you um correspond based on your personal risk profile with these products and then take it from there everything i present to you again purely educational content i provide to you um you can certainly take these ideas and formulate your trades and and probably say okay Jens said he's probably bullish on gold let's go I'm long gold but then please make sure that you understand again I only say go long or be long gold right now for educational purposes due to the better risk reward to explain this concept to you but everything um you risk here in terms of real money is risk you take for yourself and you should be aware of that before taking the trade um Full risk disclaimer can be found on the website, um, admiralmarkets.com. And uh, I don't need to introduce admirals any further, I think. Um, I think Theo did already a great job. What we want to do is to be on the same page here that we know um, why employment numbers are of interest and then look at the real numbers we just got presented 30 minutes ago. Um, we want to hatch through some theory here first and then taking it from there. So question is, why are employment numbers of interest? And um, there's like a 
a chain we are following here. That's probably a good way to put it. So if the confidence in the economy or in politics in general is good, then you usually see an increasing orders in factories. So or there's optimism um, when it's coming to to, um, the overall um, economic expectations. Let's put it that way. Um, You you really look into a solid future. You're trusting politicians that they are um, um, after your best, let's say. Um, Completely the opposite here, over here in Germany. So right now, um, even even though we don't have a release like non-farm payrolls, but um, the overall economy is is looking very, very weak, respectively dark. And it all starts with the politicians. So if you ask me as a self-employed person, hey, Jens, um, what is your expectation? Are you willing to invest right now, building an office, hiring people, um, or whatever? Um, my my answer would be um, a straightforward no, I wouldn't. And the reason is because I just don't know um, where this country is headed. I just can't trust politicians anymore. I, am I willing to invest, investing in this case, not buying equities or something like that, but building a house, let's say, um, or let's say investing in the, in the um, house itself, like, I don't know, going for whatever. Um, um, rebuilding the house or in, in, in some kind invest um, in, in in real estate, for example, my answer would be a clear no, I wouldn't. Why? Well, because we just don't know where all this is headed, especially when it comes to green politics, for example. You can clearly see that politics plays a very important role in this um, regard. And um, if you ask me, hey, Jens, do you see your future in Germany, for example? Uh, clear no, no, I don't need to to work from Germany. Um, I just don't understand why I'm still here, to be honest, I'm paying all these taxes, social insurance, and 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 getting getting um, um, well embarrassed in front of of, of others um, from politicians telling me um, shut the dot 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 up and uh, pay your taxes and um, and vote for us. If you don't vote for us, you're um, um, you're right wing extremist, whatever. Like all this is like it just doesn't make sense. And 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 this is the complete opposite of um, optimism, uh, respectively. Um, um, it's not the environment in which you're willing to invest in the future. The same is also true when building a family, for example. So long thing short, the confidence is there. Well, then there's usually investment taking place. There's an increase. In this case, we are looking at the manufacturing sector. You see an increase in orders in factories. Well, what does it mean? First of all, you see industrial production rising. And to meet the higher demand here through more investments, um, you need more people. You need to hire more people, more workers who are producing the goods, which are then sold to the, to the, um, 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 to, to the people. The more optimism there is, well, the more um, um, there is um, um, an increase in industrial production, respectively, the more, especially the manufacturing sector produ- produces goods, the more workers are needed. The thing is now you need the best workers to produce the best product. To hire the best people, well, you have to compensate them accordingly. And this is n- n- usually um, then showing itself in an increase in our in average hourly um, wages, for example. This is one of the reasons why you see these um, being published too. And um, so what does this mean? Well, if you have more qualified people who are... Um, who have to produce high quality goods and you have to compensate them accordingly, well, they have more money at the end of the day. And if they have more money, they can, so, um, they, they can, they can, they can, um, um, uh, consume more, which means you have an increase in consumption, higher propensity to consume. That's what it means. And this means more economic growth and also rising prices, which should then result in a, a rising inflation. And this is then the result or ending in a central bank hiking rates more aggressively to avoid an overheating of the economy and inflation getting out of a control. And um, all this resulting, let's say, in some kind of... Um, 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 spiral, let's say, that the more and the, the hotter the economy um, 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 gets, the more money uh, flows into the economy, the more people consume. Right now, inflation got out of control, but this is mainly due to um, all the lockdowns taking place and, and um, this, this, this weird politics around the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. Um, it was met, the, the, the lockdowns were met um, um, with more liquidity, which was pumped into the system by central banks, keeping low um, um, rates for too long, too low. And um, so long thing short, you now see that 
uh, there's 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 um 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 a higher push in inflation. So we already saw um companies. Uh, companies in this regard, uh, not um, central banks, hiking rates aggressively, like the Fed, for example. So we are within a very aggressive hiking cycle, rate height cycle. But, and this is the thing, um, right now, there's more money chasing fewer goods. You need people to produce the goods, which are obviously um, 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 wanted from people. Um, and therefore, you're looking for people, but people say, well, you know what? Compensate me accordingly. If you don't pay me enough money, I'm not willing to go um, and work for you. And uh, this is right now, let's put it that way, um, the reason why job offers are increasing or increased and stabilized at a quite elevated level. But now with the economy pulling in and we are looking into, a, let's say, a darker um, um, future, let's put it that way, probably. Um, that's the reason why a jolts just came in. Okay, just to give you an, an idea why this number matters. Um, but still, the non farm payrolls, which are released once a month at the first Friday of each month, they are a very, very good um, indication of where the economy is headed due to this overall um, um, uh, chain I just presented to you. And so the interesting thing now is I, I updated this. Let me just see, by the way. Probably I can... Ha, you know what this is? This is the um, slide from one month ago. One month ago, just having a look here at uh, where we stood, that was in December 2023. One month ago, we had an expectation. This is, um, unfortunately, I only look at June, but we will look at this um, um, here in a few seconds. One second, by the way. Okay. Um, Let's head over here to the Fat Watch tool first and go to December. I, by the way, will share the link here so that you can check it out yourself and play around with this to get an overview. So probably sometimes you might wonder, hey, what is the market expecting? Why is the market reacting the way um, it's reacting? It has all to do with expectation among market participants. And um, what market participants are expecting in terms of like the Fed, for example, at the next rate hike cycle, um, 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 rate decision, you can find here we are um, the Fat Watch tool, which is available for free and, and visible for everyone. So 13th of December, 2023, you can see here right now, expectations 475, 500 or 500 to 525. We have a likelihood here of more than 66%. Right now, this is something we will um, get provided one and a half week ago on the 14th of, of um, uh, June at the next Fed meeting. We get also economic projections in the so-called dot plot. You will see that the dot plot is likely to stay at 500 to 525. So the market right here, right now, given the numbers we just received, inflation data, but also employment situation, has dramatically switched within the last month. What, what do I mean by that, dramatically switched? Well, I mean by that, that if you look at last month, that was from one month ago, early May, when we had the last non for payrolls um, um, event here, that was the same chart. You can see here, probabilities, target rate, 13th of December, 2023. And you can see here with a likelihood of nearly 75, 76%, 425 to 450 minimum, even lower than that. And now we switched over, obviously, and one one um, um, by seventy five basis points, seventy five fifty to seventy five basis points to the right. So that switched, and you can see here four twenty five to four fifty. This is the the lowest um, 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 rate level market participants are expecting. What does this mean? Well, it tells us that the market is pricing in a more restrictive stance from the Fed. Last month, one month ago, um, two days earlier, I think we had the last event here was on the 4th of May. Let me just check it out. 4th of May? 5th. I'm sorry, the 5th. 5th of May, um, on the 3rd, we had the Fed rate decision. And the Fed rate decision told us that the dot plot, um, or respectively, they, they are saying, well, we pause rate hikes. But they're not talking about rate cuts. They're only talking about pausing further rate hikes. And still, the market two days later priced in rate cuts here by 75 basis points. So completely ignoring what the Fed 
told us because the market says we are more um um and we we're we're we are we are more sophisticated than the Fed is. And given what we're currently witnessing with this dark picture for the future, the sim um, um the, the the tensions in the banking sector and so on and so forth, well, we don't see the Fed keeping this um, um rates um, um level here, but expecting the Fed to cut rates. Well, this obviously switched now, and I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me just switch over against here. So this is now where we stand. 77% expect no further rate hike. Interesting enough, even though there was a pause and, 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 and where they, they talked about a pause at the next meetings here, um, we, we saw here an increase of expectations of another 25 basis point rate hike here now at the June meeting. Very interesting. Um, and this is now completely priced in, uh, priced, priced out. But still, long thing short, if you look at where we stand right now and we stood one month earlier, you can clearly say, well, the market is now expecting a more restrictive stance of the Fed, not expecting rate cuts anymore. And this is very interesting because usually what we tend to say is, well, if we don't expect the Fed to lower re, um, rates, this is usually something, I'm not saying toxic, but it's usually not that positive for equities, but also not that positive for gold. So we're expecting equities to drop. You're expecting gold to drop. And the interesting thing is, here's EURUSD. Let's have a look here at the NASDAQ, for example. Well, I think this picture speaks for itself. Um, so one month ago, that was here, around around this 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 time, Fifth, oh yeah, that was this was this this, this candle here. So the bullish candle, um, around thirteen thousand two hundred. Around we were trading. We we're starting the day at around thirteen thousand, closing very strong, and then breaking out. You can see that clear acceleration on the upside. Market is expecting a more restrictive stance. More restrictive means in this regard, not hiking rates, but pausing for longer than initially expected. Still, equities, especially yield-sensitive equities like um, the Nasdaq, is breaking out. We already said this, um, so it's no surprise. I, I was talking about a very optimistic, uh, or painting a very optimistic picture for 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 equities and especially tech stocks in general. That was already back in April, I think March. So I, I started quite early with that because that was a relative strong um, um, sign which we're sent there. So when when looking at the overall market, you saw that was something I also talked about. Like you saw market participants um, or respectively relative strength in. Um, um, a sector ETFs like the XLK, for example, um, looking for growth ETFs like ARK Innovation here from uh, Katie Woods, for example, uh, Katie Wood, I'm sorry. Um, and so it was a relative strong um, 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 picture we saw there. So it's no big surprise that we are seeing this breakout higher now. And um, so long thing short, this is a very strong sign in general. So the market is right now, even, even though, and, and this is a, again true today for the non-farm payrolls, so this is now um, a 50-minute chart. This is the reaction to the non-farm payrolls. So the the um, how can I say that? Uh, so the expectation is, if numbers come in better than expected, you expect the market to flush lower. And then the question is, continue? Do we continue to push lower, or will we bought back? And if we are bought back, and in this case, well, we are we are slightly below that level. So this is the initial candle here. Um, if we make it now above 14,512, 15, um, and making new intraday highs, I think this is a very strong sign. And we are likely to see continuous strength here on the upside, even though I have to say we are quite extended right now. So quite extended means, obviously, we broke above the August highs 2022 here. Um, we broke higher. We saw a massive acceleration. That was, um, I think, last week. Yeah, 26th. Is it correct? Yeah, 26. That was last week. We saw very strong close. Probably that's kind of a relief rally, um, given the developments around the debt ceiling, probably. That's probably also a good way to put it. But however you put this, um, overall, I'd, I'd not be surprised if we continue with this current run higher up here to these levels. Um, not today, by the way. So I'm not talking today, but I'm probably talking about um, the next week probably into the um, 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 quarterly close. So this is now June. So second um, quarter is about to end in around four weeks from now. Um, so we are probably headed for, for a run up to 15,000, 15,200 points. Why not? Um, and given the overall skepticism right now, um, 
And uh, well, I, I, I'm not really sure, but well, let's just have a look here. I want to have a look at CNBC fear. Uh, no, I'm sorry. No, it's not it's CNN fear and greed. Let's just have a look here where we stand. Fear and greed. So it's a retail sentiment indicator. This is greed. It's greed, but it's not extreme greed. So it's like, well, given what we've seen here in tech stocks, well, this is still solid, let's say. It's not extreme. I wouldn't call it extreme, probably. Um, and that being said, uh, th there's, there's some kind of rest skepticism around the overall situation, which is probably helping stocks to continue higher from here, even though it looks quite extended. I wouldn't, by the way, I it, I, I wouldn't go long here from a, from a, a medium-term perspective. So, I, but I still favor long engagements intraday and, and then train, train to, 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 trying to, to capture um, um, some, some moves on the upside, similar to what we've witnessed yesterday, for example. So you can see it here. So quite, so we came in, let's say, I'm not really sure how to put this. It wasn't very strong, but it wasn't very weak too. And then yesterday, it was um, we are off the races and saw a very, very strong run higher here with a strong trend into the um, um, close here that was around the last hour of trading. We saw a drop um, and the closing was around 14,450 around. Very interesting enough. So this is the closing price. We flushed, given the non farm payrolls, into this event and now we are buying it back. And in around five minutes, we see the market opening Let's just see. But I have to say, I wouldn't be surprised to see further gains here on the upside um, and a very strong weekly close. Risk reward wise, I think the is the the, the, the S and P is probably better. Here, um, we finally broke to higher highs. We are holding obviously this upward sequence. Finally, we're breaking out higher, and there's further room up to the um, August highs for three. 4330, something like that, 4,300 points on the upside. Also here, I'd probably look for long engagements right now, and especially in the current environment. Again, so simply speaking, you expect non farm payers coming in better than expected. You expect a push higher in yields. And if yields rise, usually this is not very positive for equities. So now we get exactly that. Let me just switch over here to, to my chart and probably head over to two-year yields. So this is two-year yields. And then let's have a look here at five-minute chart. I think you can see it already. So this is yields, 230 German time, 435, spike higher. It's not that much. We are only talking about 10 basis points. It's not it's not significant, but it's significant enough to obviously spot it here. So you can see it. Um, and this is usually something which is corresponding with weakness in yield um, 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 in equities, and we're not getting this weakness in equities. And this is also a relative strong sign. And that being said, I, I still I continue to favor long engagements um, in case of the s and p five hundred. Even though the question is, um, is it really like the index you wouldn't want to play, like the S&P or the NASDAQ? Why do I say that? Well, because volatility just dropped to, I think, new yearly lows. I'm not really sure about that. Let me just check it out. Um, so therefore, we are checking the VIX, the volatility index on the S&P 500 um, at the CBOE. And you can see, usually there's, a, yeah, new yearly lows. You can see that there. Um there's a rough saying, a rule of thumb, where I say, well, everything below 20 points, you don't just don't want to trade equities, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm equity indices like the S&P. It's not marketplace, but you want to focus on um, stocks. So like I'm, I'm, I'm cherry picking, you're, 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 I'm, 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 I'm looking for here. And therefore, for example, you're looking at the pre-market screener. This is now the routine um, we're going through. We went through last week, for example, here when we traded the earnings season. So what's currently hot? What's 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 or well, where, where do you say? Well, this this has potential. Um, for example, MongoDB. So MDB is the um, ticker symbol. They released um, um, earnings yesterday, very strong earnings after hours. In addition to that, um, there's also, you can see that there. So there's MongoDB, for example. There's also Lululemon. Um, sorry. Uh, so, and, and gapping up strongly, 30%, good guidance. This is probably a play then if you're favoring the long side where you watch for a long plays. This is how you how you do it. Our Lulu. This is like um the I I I prefer to say call it the the Livermore approach. Like you're you're looking for 
uh, the least resistance. So strong earnings, strong fundamental catalyst, very elevated um, 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 volume already in the pre-market, just to make sure we are on the same page here. Let's just have a look. MongoDB, FinWiz, what's telling us? 1.8 million average daily, daily trading volume. And now we're seeing 30% of that already being traded in the pre-market, even more than that. Super hot stock right now. So, and if we are favoring the long side, gapping up, if we are holding most of it or holding volume by the average price, you're preferring a long engagements and MDB, for example. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I probably wouldn't necessarily trade the NASDAQ, probably not necessarily trade the S&P 500, but in general would favor the long side. By the way, we are talking about all these um, potential setups. We haven't yet had a look at uh, the non-farm payrolls release itself. Um, so numbers came in better than expected. So 339 against an expectation of 195. I already said, don't be surprised. Um, so it's very important already to have an idea on what is the market expecting to then use this as a um, um, to formulate a trade hypothesis. So, and especially if we are now seeing a print which comes in better than expected, I'm not surprised at all because again, if you have um, um, a website like Trading Economics, for example, what you can do is you can look here at the countries, United States, there you click on labor, and there you have the ADP. And we know the numbers were released yesterday, better than expected. Consensus was 170K, came in 278. And, and this is even more interesting, we can compare this. And then you will see why this matters when looking at the non-farm payrolls. We are looking at the United States here. We are looking at the NON non farm payrolls. And then you will see, ta-da, I mean, there's a huge spike lower. So very unfortunate, let's say. So that was COVID. But usually you can see there's a positive correlation. So if ADP comes in better than expected, you usually expect non for payrolls to come in better than expected and vice versa. Same is true ISM employment, for example, better than expected. Usually it's an indication of like non for payrolls will be better than expected. So you can expect numbers to come in better than expected. The question is how much better than expected? And even if 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 th then you have a significant surprise on the upside, as we have right now, with um again 339 against 195 expected. Um, well, what does this mean? Uh, usually it means it's bearish for equities because there's a yield which is spiking higher. If if equities react positively to that, that's a strong sign. It's relative strength, in my opinion, and adding to my overall thesis. Um, again, also here, when looking, for example, now, this is nearly updated in, in real time. You also don't see any spike higher here in the expectations for the June meeting that the Fed will hike by another 25 basis points. This is also very interesting um, to note here because usually they say, well, strong employment situation. There's no reason for the Fed to cut. Probably they are motivated here even more to high grades um, further. No spike here at all too. So it's like the market is just taking a deep breath, realizing, okay, numbers were good, solid, but it's not um, a big game changer. And now let's keep on playing like we played yesterday already before. And there was clear momentum and bullishness on the downside. And um, so that, that's it on, regarding the um, um, the indices. When I look at the um, non-farm payrolls and having all this information and then using that and formulating a trade hypothesis, usually I prefer to look at macro, macro place, probably a very good way to put it. And there, do we have it here? No, I'm sorry. So then let's probably, let me type this in here. So this is the goal chart on a daily time frame. So, and uh, well, as you can see, so there was a drop after we spiked early May into new all-time highs. Everyone expecting the follow-through, me too, by the way. Um, and, and probably that was the reason why we then saw another drop lower. Um, but now, when going lower in the time frame here, you can see that we broke this channel lower. You can see that here. So it's a clear sequence of falling highs and lows on an hourly chart. Probably here, switch over to this one. There we go. And um, so obviously, I'm sorry. So obviously we are breaking this sequence already earlier. So that was already, let's just have a look. 
when did we break it hold it that was around yeah early this week so 31st so it was already on on um, um wednesday thursday uh, tuesday wednesday and there you can see this is now a key level and by the way again let's let's just probably move in even further you can see here yields spiking and you know that usually gold um reacts to spiking yields with a drop simple reason because there's no yield involved when trading gold so holding gold is like physically gold it's like a gold bar there's no dividend or there's no um um um, um interest rates um, um, or interest interest um, um payments something like that it's just like and it's more it's unattractive in an um, um environment in which you see interest rates rising even more interesting to see gold currently pushing higher because he's saying hey look at interest rates so higher interest rates should mean gold should drop that's also a clear sign that the market is expecting rather sooner or later rate cuts from the fed even even though not yet so right now probably what we're seeing also in next nasdaq tech stocks for example is kind of a anticipation of this is inevitable. We will see rate cuts. And by the way, there's also great charts showing you, for example, for gold, um, that we're probably not just headed for new all-time highs, um, but probably we are headed for a double from here in the upcoming five years. Um, probably five, probably three years. Um, so that that the gold is about to see a significant break higher, which is by the way, also very interesting. Look at this chart right here. So push higher to all-time highs. This is still a daily chart coming in, holding these formal highs. And now we are curling up. So this is like we're like curling higher. No one is really expecting a break higher. I expected the break above um here this this um um 980 985 area already today um with the with the non-farm payrolls release. We haven't we haven't yet broken it, but we have a clear trigger. Like you can see it here, we found resistance already there. So not breaking higher, flushing lower, but holding well. We've seen other occasions in the past um, where we really sold off hard. That was here, for example, last month. That was we we were trading at two thousand um, thirty five and ending the day around two. Well, no, that was the lows. I think we we finished something like twenty dollars lower, but still significantly drop um, um, on the downside. And therefore, given the, the the release of this data set, we are holding well. Um, even though I don't want to be long here, but I could imagine to put in a um, um, a buy stop above the the, the recent highs. 980, 985, some somewhere here, 983 probably, and expecting further gains. Um, and by the way, it, it depends a little on on what you plan to trade. Probably you you you're taking this trade because you're anticipating um, a push up to the um, all time highs. Probably only want to play the momentum and projecting a target where you say, hey, this is a potential neckline. Probably you might also call it a head shoulder or something like that. Um, and you're just projecting from these lows to the neck line, putting it here and saying, okay, if we break above 983, 985, projected target might be 2030, 2035 probably. And you have a clear defined risk. So the risk is probably 966, so the low of the NFP candle. So if if I'm going long, 983, let me just check it out, type it in here, probably with the editor, one second. Playing around a little. So the entry, Entry long might be 1983. The stop of this might be the low here, 967. So risk is 16 USD per ounce. Um, and then we're taking projected target. Let's let's work with the first target. So here using using this this um width of this this formation putting it here coming in at around target 2035 so potential reward is uh 52 and then you can see hey great you can now calculate your risk reward ratio the rrr and as you can see it's 16 box risk to 52 and as you can see this is 2.25 two one i'm sorry the other way around that way so makes sense i i just hope it makes sense um so 
Um, and what does it mean? Well, it's just um, it's like like uh, um, um, purely theoretical. You don't know whether whether we will reach these levels. You just don't know. Um, but given that we have a quite, I mean, it's a it's a it, it depends a little on how how many times do you think this will play out? Um, you think it will probably work out three out of ten times that we that we'll reach this this target. Well, then we come to another concept. This is now um, 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 some 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 trading related stuff. Um, how you calculate your risk reward, respectively. How you also calculate your expected value. How you're um, defining a profitable trading decision you're making here. So, let's first of all have a look here at the so-called expected value. So the expected value is um, the average winning trade multiplied with the hit rate and then you subtract probably doing it that way and you have the average losing trade multiplied with the loss rate and we're talking about profitability in trading once this is greater zero after commissions. So, okay, we have, let's assume now, this is purely theoretical, but you get already an idea on which hit rate you need longer term to make sure that this is greater zero. What does it mean? Well, it means if if you're saying on average, you're making 325 and losing 100, let's assume, um, or you're saying one and then but we are, we are multiplying it with 100, so probably easier to, to calculate then. Um, you will find out that the expected value of this is greater zero. See, 325 multiplied with the hit rate. And by the way, don't be um, irritated now because you might say, well, this is difficult to, to calculate because hit rate and loss rate, but it's... Uh, the same coin. It's only the um, um, other way. Make sure, right? Thirty percent hit rate means seventy percent loss rate. So just just assume um, and, and and do this without getting too complicated. Just think about it. Um, Thirty percent, let's say, is the hit rate. Three out of ten times you're hitting here in this in this in this setup. So just throwing this in it says expected value. 325, you multiply it with 30%, 0.3, and then you subtract 100 multiplied with 0.7, so the opposite. And as you can see, let me just calculate this. So the second part is very easy, but the first one is 3 multiplied with 0.3. So 97.5 plus 0.3. And then you subtract 70, sorry. And as you can see, this is 27.50. So why did we do this? So the, first of all, you look at this and say, well, mm, okay, very interesting. Um, so don't turn, turn off your, your computer right now because this is crucial to understand. Um, it tells us with the risk reward ratio in this regard, when you're, when you're looking here for such a setup, for example, um, you only need to be right three out of 10 times to make this a profitable decision. So if you take this trade and you say the probability of this moving that way, I mean, at the end, it depends. And, and it, this is where, where all the, the backtesting comes um, down to. Does your hypothesis make sense? Um, do you have an edge? And the edge you are having, does it generate a positive expected value? Once the answer to this is yes, a losing trade is still a good trade because you're trading with an edge. You're trading with positive expectancy, which means this is a profitable trade decision. And this is what, it, what trading is all about. You just don't know when entering the trade, whether it will be a winner or a loser. You just don't know. But if you're trading with an edge, if you're trading with a positive expectancy, the trade is a good one. And you should take the bet all the time. The same is true. You, you probably have heard about this. Um, we, are, we are tossing a coin. And let's just assume... Um, we're we're sitting here, you and I, right now, um, and it's hats tails. And I say, well, I'm hats, you're tails, and the payoff is two to one. 
That means every time there's hats, I get $2, while every time there's tails, you get $1. Um, would you take the trade? If you ask me this question, I would play the whole night because I know I have a positive expectancy um, because I'm getting, there's a, there has a hit rate of 50%. Hats, tails, depends on hats, tails, 50, 50, but I get $2 for each one, uh, each time hats, hats hits, while you're only getting $1 for each time tails hits. If I ask you the question, you should you should just run away screaming no 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 i don't want to take this trade and this is exactly what if if you if you if you built the bridge here to trading why taking such a trade if you have this expectancy now you have to find out whether this is true or not and therefore you have to um, run back tests you have to do some 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 kind of um, um um research quantitative analyzing for example um how many times did the setup work how many times didn't it work but it all comes back to making sure that the expected value at the end of the day when taking the trade is greater zero. So all this is about once it's greater zero, take the trade. If it's not, run away. Don't take the trade. So once when is the moment once I'm, I'm, I'm here that the, the expectancy is not given anymore? Let's play around a little. Let's say two out of 10. So I have 20% hit rate. So now, as you can see, we're turning it negative. You can already see it. It's 650, zero. And then we are subtracting 80. As you can see, the result is obviously minus 15. Minus 15 is less than zero, run away. Because now you're losing money on the setup. It might look... Um, great, and and you might have a, a positive feeling or something like that. But if you play this over and over again, and and you're only having a hit rate of two out of ten, so twenty percent, you're obviously negative, and that's the reason why you shouldn't take the trade. You take the trade once you have a hit rate which is thirty percent. You shouldn't take the trade once the hit rate is only twenty percent. And why? Well, because the expected value turns negative. It, it's there's a saying you probably have heard about this. Let winning rules, uh, let winning trades run, cut losing trades short. That makes sense and perfect. It makes perfect sense. Why? Well, you can find the reason within this formula here. You can see that winning trades run means make average winning trades big. Cut losing trades short make average losing trades small. The greater here this part of the um, equation. And the smaller this one, the greater the expected value and the greater your profitability. So that's why you should let winning trades run, cut losing trades short. Problem with that is, even if you let your winning trades run, doesn't necessarily mean that your overall hit rate um, is high enough to make sure that your overall um, um, expected value is still positive. That's why you have to also think about the hit rate and make sure that there is a, um, an increased likelihood that the hit rate will have or meet a, a certain threshold to justify the trade so that the expected value is positive. So I hope you, you enjoyed this. <laughs> I hope you, that, that wasn't planned, but I think it makes perfect sense. And, and it's a great, a great way um, to look at this right here. Let's just have a look at um, what equity is doing. That's good. We are, we are above the highs from, from the non-farm payrolls. We're driving higher. Bullish opening drive. This is a five-minute chart. So here is the um, NFP candle. We're driving higher. We are spiking into the, the lows now. Let's see if we can hold 14,500. If we're dropping the um, NFP lows here, 14,450, probably the bulls are losing some steam. And probably um, we are pulling in then, finally. Um, coming in coming a little more sharper. Um, but overall, I think... Here in this regard, I I probably watch this this potential breakout level. By the way, you can see we are pulling in deeper now. That means your potential stop and thus your 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 potential losing trade is greater, which means you need a higher hit rate once you see the break higher. Um, so we're probably four out of of ten, which we have to have or need to see so that this is still a profitable setup. And that's it from mine. I hope you enjoyed the show and. Uh, Happy trading. Watch your stops. Talk to you again next week. Um, I really look forward to it. Um, enjoy yourself. Have a nice weekend. And um, talk to you soon. All the best. Bye-bye.